Hello everyone, welcome back to the Good Bit Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to another exciting edition. A triple header this week, ladies and gents, as we have two guests joining the show for the first time in absolutely ages. I'm buzzing to have them both on. And we're chatting about the 1986 classic film this week, Labyrinth, from Jim Henson, starring Jennifer Connelly, and of course, can you believe it, David Bowie. And uh, this week, returning to the good bit is Greg Jones, uh, formerly uh, from the Karate Kid episode, one of my favourite episodes of the entire year. So welcome back to you, Greg. And for the first time, joining the good bit, talent scout herself of Anagram Talent, it is Leanne McCormack. First things first, Greg, welcome back to the good bit. Oh, <laughs> fabulous, Dessa, fabulous. Yes, no, it's it, it's been going good. Lots of movies getting in, yeah. which is very exciting. And it was such a great experience last time. So honestly, thank you for having me back again to do well, it. Listen, it's, it's, I knew you were going to come back just so you could say nice things about the podcast. So you're welcome. Exactly. Anytime. Yeah. Right, Have you got so any... See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you if you've got any new steel books that you can show us. Or tell us about. Oh, it. oh my! Well, as there's in the in the little angle in the room that I'm recording mm. in, there's a section of this. We've had to go and buy another uh, little mini <laughs> bookcase. Um, <laughs> what is a new one? Oh, oh yes. Um, that's when you showed me. I'm sure it was an Avengers one, maybe Infinity War or something. Oh, so we got Top Gun Maverick, which was oh, the brand nice. new. Like <laughs> this was a, this was a this was a, a find and a half. Um, I'm going to put that there because I'm not going to be able to put it. I have got prepped and ready two copies of Labyrinth. Oh, very two. nice. Two. So one is the is like the 4K edition where you've got all the lovely characters on the back and then when you go <laughs> inside, it's, uh, you got all the... Di- Sorry, I just banged the mic stand then. And then this one is, is by a company called Mondo oh. who have made this one here like oh, that. Nice. And then on the back, you've got the lovely owl and a logo, but you open it up inside, and the disc is one of the fire demons. And then you've got all like the uh, all the stairway inside. I'm just like, oh, yes, that so is the good. one. That is the one. Listen, if that is not an incentive for those just listening to the podcast to go and watch the video version. Exactly. Sorry, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't a great podcast moment. There was. <laughs> it's fine, it's my fault. I'm just like, Look at this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um and yeah, yes. but I, I knew you were such a big yeah, steel book guy, so I had to make sure I checked oh, in on yeah. that before we moved on. Oh yeah. Um and yes. a, a welcome for the first time to Leanne, who listen, I, I'm buzzing to have you on because it's your choice of film this week, Labyrinth. I I know. I thank you so much for having me on. This is really exciting. I've never done something like this before, so a little bit nervous, but I'm with possibly two of the nicest people on the planet so i couldn't think of better people to chat to um we'll take that uh, (laughs) yeah we'll take that we'll we'll take that thank you (laughs) i just realized as well for for those who wouldn't be watching uh, necessarily that i was umming and ahhing in the background and they must have been thinking who is this spooky female voice who (laughs) hasn't been introduced yet um but i was just admiring your works of beauty oh my goodness i I, gorgeous i um i have a limited edition labyrinth dvd set i think it's the 30th anniversary edition which i don't have with me but um it's, nice. uh, it's 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 a beautiful thing and it's got the little pamphlet with all the extra bits and pieces and pictures oh. um so i'm yeah. so excited to be talking about this this film honestly one of the best my favorite films ever <laughs> yeah listen i i don't know how i missed this one that i like i'd never seen it before um, and this what? is like a total oh. classic that's always been on my radar. And then as soon as you mentioned it, that's like the point of the podcast, you know what I mean? Like to try and get people's favorite movies and then it makes me watch them, you know, and then yeah. we can we can discuss them. I don't like yeah. it to be this big fancy review because I don't I consider myself like a I'm a film critic and you know my opinion matters. But like, you know, <laughs> it's kind of we're here to learn about new films that are old if that makes sense so it was Mm -hmm. a joy watching it and we will get into it um we're talking about steelbooks and that sort of thing do you leanne do you collect anything like that do you have any like obviously you said limited edition dvd but Mm. um is there any movie memorabilia you like to collect or it doesn't need to be movie related but anything like that yeah um you know what i don't really honestly it's more what people buy for me so okay it's i i have favorite films and i would never think about purchasing memorabilia myself but then obviously the labyrinth limited edition was bought for me as a gift and I love it and um I'm more about um 
movie soundtracks really i mm. love vinyls um i love collectors editions um so if i'm collecting anything it's more more like that but i'm i'm to be honest pretty bad with my my film watching i'm more of a tv series kind of person um, yeah it still counts um, though so, i mean it counts. It, it, it kind <laughs> of, the amount of stuff that's put out though tv wise could mm. literally be on par with some of the movies that are coming out now what, what have you been watching mm. recently Indeed. well i've been watching this is a bit controversial i know it's not for everybody but on netflix the new dharma um yes. series uh jeffrey dharma uh played brilliantly by evan peters um I mean, probably one of the most adult things on TV at the moment. It's just so, we, we talk about it quite a lot in our office. Um, you feel sort of grimy watching it and very, very uncomfortable, yeah. but it's so compelling. You can't, you can't help it. And I'm quite into um, real, uh, either documentaries or real life dramas or fact-based things. Um, so it's, I, I've, I've just finished it and I, I feel like, oh, I need to, to decompress now and watch <laughs> something. Say, I have to go for a bath. Yeah. I need to just yeah. go wash, wash it off me. Um, but fantastic <laughs> acting, fantastic storytelling, um, even though obviously it is based on horrific fact. Um, mm. And uh, I, I just love performance based work, really. Yeah. I think that's, I think, I guess being a, a talent agent as well, um, it's where I sort of veer towards. I, I like to, to see actors and, and what they do with it, with the character, especially one um uh sort of as, as hard hitting as that so yeah i've just yeah. finished that so it's been quite a nice light relief to to step away from something like that and go back into the fantasy dream world of of, of labyrinth yeah. we've just, slightly yeah. different uh, <laughs> film yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. just a bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's funny like that jeffrey Dahmer series was one of those ones that came on and i felt like everybody was watching it or at least talking mm. about it um, mm. saying that they were going to watch it or they were interested or even they knew the story beforehand they maybe watched documentaries or like the one I'm sure a film came out about it in the early 2000s as well um, mm. so I'm not sure how accurate that one was yeah. um, but like you know it happened with Stranger Things recently when that finished and like Game of Thrones recently and, and other big films and, and TV shows like that where they were so kind of hot topics mm. whereas like I went to work and everybody was talking about it I was on the bus and there was two like young girls sitting next to me talking about it. I was speaking to my family about like everybody seemed to have an opinion on this Jeffrey Dahmer thing. Yeah. And the funny thing for me was I actually didn't know the story mm. before watching the series, right? So it's obviously very, mm. there's some accurate things about it. There's some things that people are debating and that's fine. That always happens with these kind of dramatizations. Um, but it was interesting watching it, not knowing the story, not knowing the character, because to me, I'm sitting there watching it just as a series. You know, what is what's coming next in this episode? What is, I mean, if you did know the, the, the story and, and you know, the history of the court cases and things like that, mm. you'd be sitting there thinking, you know, this is either very well represented or this is a, just horrendous, you know, reality that's involved here. Whereas I kind of watched it from a kind of broader perspective of not knowing the story first. Um, Greg, did you get a chance to catch that Jeffrey Dahmer I, series? I still haven't seen it. It is on the watch list. It's I'm crazy, so right? behind with TV at the moment, but um, I've heard so many good things about it, but we're we're just waiting to find the time yeah. to sit down and watch it's it. Hard. Yeah. So much, yeah. You know, I'm slightly dreading it as well because I've heard it's going to be quite harrowing. So I'm just uh, yes, I you don't have know to if be I'm in ready. The the right the yes. right frame of mind for something just really bleak and not particularly yeah. pleasant <laughs> yeah i mean i think yeah. things like animal, animal animal crossing stresses me out so the thought of <laughs> like of sitting down with something like this i'm like oh this is gonna be all right <laughs> no i know i know um but evan peters oh. absolutely electric in the series he's so good oh. so good and i didn't know much about him other than you know the kind of main things he, he'd done um, Pietro yeah. and things like that, you know. So, oh, um, yes. seeing him in that, I was just yeah. like total um, transformation. It was crazy. So, very, very good performance. One mm. of the best of the year. Mm. Um, but as you say, though, Greg, like falling behind on TV shows, there's so much nowadays. And I know we kind of mention this a lot so on the podcast, much but, but all the streaming services, it's almost like, how do you pick which one to mm. subscribe to? What, what have you been checking out recently? Oh, so. I am fully up to date on Andor, the new oh, um, nice. I'm a few Star Wars behind, series yeah. on Disney Plus. Oh, I mean, I, I I am a massive Star Wars fan, and Rogue One was my favorite Star Wars project to date. And I just think Andor 
just delivers something totally, totally different. Definitely, it feels all within that rogue world, uh, the the Rogue One world, but it's it's so dark and mature, and there's so much dialogue that is like heavily political that I'm just like this would be lost on youngins. Um, but I just I think it's absolutely riveting, and the fact that each episode's like nearly an hour long, and by the time that it's all done, we're gonna have this twelve hour like creation. I just, I think it's been brilliant. So I'm so glad they've picked it up for a second season. Yeah. Um I'm just trying to think. Yeah, that that's to be honest, in the time that we've had kind of all have been really like catching up on. But um I went to see the new Black Panther the other night. Uh finally, finally got to see it. Right. And oh that was it was um that was that was such a good film. It was really, really good. But it felt so sad because obviously, you know, we've lost the late great Chadwick Boseman. But it was um yeah. And it, I liked how they, so I'll obviously be very, very spoiler free, but I liked how they honoured him through it, but didn't make the entire film just this one huge piece of mourning because it could right. have easily have been that. But I like mm. the fact that it was, it was honouring him, but without it just, you know, allowing that sadness to completely overwhelm the whole movie. But it was, um, it was a really sad film. Mm. Um out of all the Marvel things, it's definitely the one that's like you can feel the pain in yeah. the the writing and everybody's acting and the way that the story goes about. But I I thought it was great and really fitting way to end Phase Four as well. Like really, really right. fitting. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people were a little bit skeptical of that. Like, how are they going? I mean, obviously they're going to have to do yeah. something, but how yeah, are they going to like yeah. pay tribute to him? Um, and I yeah. think it was done very classy, right? You know, it was like it wasn't yeah. too in yeah. your face and too overboard. So they had to do no, something and, no. and able to do it in that way is, is probably a good thing, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it was handled with just the right level of love and care for me as a, as a fan going into it because like, it was absolutely devastating to hear of his news of his passing. So, and and then obviously, you, you, you know, we hear that he went through all these battles while filming the fight all scenes of these other and movies. Stuff? And you like, just oh think, my goodness. this is insane. The amount of work that that man did and put himself through while going through what he was already going through. Mm. Yeah, it was um, it, nothing short of like true heroic. Like that's real heroism. But um, yeah, yeah, so it was it was great to go and say, and it was lovely to actually finally see it. And it wraps a bone phase four. And, yeah, uh, yeah. That that's kind of that's been it for us, really. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, what about the, you? Have you catched anything? Uh, well, I've, I've actually been really slacking with the cinema recently because <gasps> busy times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. I know. I know. It's it's not sorry. Like, <laughs> right, Leanne, we're off. Come on. I know. For God's sake. I mean. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> Um, however, this is a, actually I didn't yeah. even plan on this, but I just looked at the list of films that I've watched recently, and I saw in the mm. cinema see how they run based on oh, your recommendations. You went to go see it, yes. Oh, bloody brilliant! From, from last time because I knew it was one I wanted to catch, um, and then the fact that you you talked about it on the podcast last time, I was like, right, okay, yeah. I'll definitely try and catch it. And then it was nearly out of cinemas because it was moving straight to Disney Plus. It's on there already. It's, yeah, it's it's straight yeah. on Disney Plus already. So, I thought that was a lightning shocker. quick. But my goodness, you are so right. Maybe one of my favorite movies of the whole year. Hey. Yeah, really? Yeah, it's such amazing. a delight. Amazing. Yeah. I haven't seen this no. one yet. This is one for my for my list. Then I must go watch oh, it. Absolutely, Leanne. Yeah, mm. it's, it's it's already on Disney Plus. It's just okay. it's so feel good and a really good, like quite modern murder mystery. Mm. Right, and it's yeah. like it's your typical modern mystery story, but like with like kind of as you say, like a modern twist, but just like that comedy that is like consistently uh upbeat one after the other bang 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 you know um which yeah. kind of is definitely missing from cinema in 2022 anyway because we do get all these blockbusters which yeah. are great and we love them we'll go see them but we films like that you know are ones that i i love almost more and um, mm. it was the yeah. same with everything everywhere all at once i know it wasn't a particularly oh. small film um, but it was a kind of an underrated film, one that was kind of hidden. Mm. Um, and then when everyone got to see it, it was like word of mouth kind of spread how great that film was, you know. Um, so See How They Run was was one that I caught. And then also in the cinema, I saw Black Adam. Um, oh, yes. Which is the, which is the DC, uh, most recent DC film. Um, and my issue with these films are I don't mean to have like this Marvel versus DC thing. Like I, I kind of want all the films to succeed. Like I know that, 
you know, we always have these debates, but um, a lot of the DC films are almost a little bit too much for me, um, mm. where it's just, it just goes on a little bit <laughs> too long um, with the same sort of thing. Whereas Marvel, they can they have the sort of liberty of, of building up, you know, the storylines and the relationships that you have yeah. with the characters over so many films. They really take their time with mm. it. So when it gets to like a real death or, you know, like something really serious in the film, you really care. Mm. Um, and I think sometimes that is kind of lacking in the DC films. And um, I'm a big sort of Dwayne Johnson fan. I love The Rock. Um, so I was happy to see him in anything. Um, but it had the same issues for me, I think. Uh, just being like, I don't really, I'm not as invested as maybe I should be, if that makes sense. Yeah. Just... Oh, go on. Sorry, Leanne. Sorry. No, 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 not at all. Um, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, Dwayne. The Rock Johnson is brilliant, everything. And oh, is it yeah. is it the first time has he played a, a sort of superhero character before? Because I feel like it's a long time coming if he hasn't. He's so not to this extent. Or, anyway, yeah. yeah. I mean, all of his characters are are super, are, are very super. Um, yeah. But I don't know. <laughs> yes. Indeed, based yeah. on a character, I'm not sure. I don't think yeah. so. Right? No, I think it's his first superhero. I know he pioneered for quite a long time to actually have a Black Adam. Um, adaptation so i think he's kind of like pioneered it i think mm. i think from what i read yeah um but yeah it is a long time coming to play yeah. a superhero because he's literally like he's a tank yeah. so it's the fact he's not been a superhero <laughs> already is absolutely mind-blowing <laughs> he's a tank have they heard the wrong described as that he has a tank he's a rock um he's a rock he's a tank <laughs> yes <laughs> all the big yeah. the big objects big immovable objects. all the big... <laughs> <laughs> he is um, he is I um I feel the same way about Marvel. I think I'm I'm very fond of the Marvel universe. It has a definite place in my heart. I think that they sort of tap into that the humor element a lot more as well. The the films come across mm -hmm. for me a lot funnier in general. Mm -hmm. The characters as well are a lot more relatable, even though they are superhero characters. Yeah. They have their flaws, um, and also I mean the first Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. Well, oh, I yeah. mean, I think will be forevermore my favourite. So that nothing can displace that. It was just such a revelation, really, when that came on the scene. Yeah. Um, I remember mm. seeing it at the cinema and being blown away. So, yeah, I had the same same kind of feeling as you. It's it's the DC world can seem a little bit dour, and I'm not sure why it hasn't quite got the that impact. Um, but yeah. People have different mm. preferences, preferences, I'm sure. That's true. And I mean, the film's going to do so well. You know, these mm. DC films still bring in billions of dollars. So it, it, there's no point oh, of yeah. us, you know, complaining. But they seem to be happy. But it's like um, the, the Marvel humour comes from our love for the characters and that we know the wee in-jokes that they all have with each other. And then yeah. DC are like, let's try and make some of our films funny. And we're just like, that wasn't funny what you said at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I do enjoy them because they're big blockbusters, but maybe I just feel like they're lacking in that kind of department, the care factor, if you will. Mm. Um, but I, you know, go see it. It's 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 a it's a fun superhero. It's a DC film. It's going to be the exact same yeah. as all the others, you know. Well, I I happened to see it like by chance because I remember seeing the trailers and I was like, ah, I'm not yeah. like desperately fussed to go and see it, and I booked. To go and see, um, it was a movie called "Pray for the Devil," mm -hmm. um, and I'd booked to go and see it. At what I thought was in the oh, shout out the Birkenhead View. Um, <laughs> <Shout and out. laughs> we know you. It was, it was nearby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, at Birkenhead View. <laughs> um, so I went to went to go see it at that time, and I suddenly get there. They scan the ticket and they go, "You know, this is for Birmingham, right?" And I thought, "Oh, oh. shoot." So, uh, no. yeah, and so I was like, oh, well, I do now. Um, so in <laughs> in in the uh, in the flurry of trying to book a ticket, I'd I'd selected Birmingham instead of Birkenhead. Very easily done. Lots of BIR. And, um, <laughs> so and then when I rock up and I was like, okay, and they said, all right, the next showing of the film that you want is in like about three hours. And I thought, oh, jib this. Um, so I said, have you got anything like starting now? They said, well, Black Adam begins in about 15 minutes. I thought, well, we're seeing Black Adam then, aren't we? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I, I saw it purely by like chance, but yeah. I'm glad I did because I, I was a bit like, you. I was like, oh, come on. You know, I, I, felt, right. I just felt like DC just needed a, just needed something. I, thought, I just feel like the, the, this, this new like universe that they've created of these connected films, I was like, 
it's just missing something, but it felt quite fresh and it new did. for DC, which was really nice. It was like the same kind of effect that the first Wonder Woman movie had, which yes. I still think was absolutely amazing. In fact... I was going to say, you're looking uh, for the steelbook. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I have a, uh, a fancy, fancy one here. So it's in... Sorry. So anybody that's listened to it on a podcast, it's in like a box and it's by a company called Titans of Cult. Yeah. And it has like a little miniature version of a shield. And I swear there's something else in there, but I can't remember what. Yes. But, um, a full yeah. on sword. So I, a full on sword. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I did. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a. Yeah. I, I thought Wonder Woman was absolutely amazing film. And I'm still yet to see the second one. Me too. Me um, too. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm with you. It it was it was refreshing for yeah. the DCEU. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought Patrick Swayze's character was quite good. I thought he he was a nice and refreshing. Patrick Swayze. Who am I thinking of? Oh, I was going to say, how's that happened? Patrick Swayze of the Dirty Dancing thing. <laughs> yeah, <I was> like, <laughs> because I, <laughs> I'm just Patrick that. Swayze. I was like, I love I, him, I genuinely but... <laughs> for a moment I thought, how have they done that? I'm sitting there just being so confident with my opinion. Piers Brosnan, not Patrick Swayze. Ah, I can see why. I can see why yeah. the confusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh yeah, like Patrick. Swayze. I was like, Patrick Swayze. Chris, really have, we the, have, we, have we watched the right of the same film? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh god, it's been a long day. Um, Piers Brosnan. I mean, I would love to yeah. see somebody lift up Dwayne The Rock Johnson in the same way in Dirty Dancing at the end. Could you imagine? Oh, that would be a beautiful thing. Imagine. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. That would have been an interesting, that would have been oh. a twist. A plot twist. That would have been a twist and a half, yes. Oh, but man. yes, Pierce Brosnan. He was very good. Yes. I, thought, I thought his character was good. Yes. Oh, that's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> yo, so we're coming up to the kind of festive season. Still feels, mm. what does it feel early? I don't know. I heard my first Christmas song the other day. Um, I was down in Manchester at the weekend, had a wee acting gig down there, then we just spent the weekend there, and it was really good. Ooh. First time being there, I always wanted to go to Manchester, it was such a big city and like lively city, um, would recommend anybody want to go there. Um, mm. And the Christmas markets were just amazing, they just kept going on and on and on. Compared to the ones in Glasgow, we think we've got it good, we've just got this wee area, but like <laughs> it was like a whole shopping centre, just the Christmas markets. So like I always say... You know, because my sister's birthday is on the first of December, so we always we don't celebrate Christmas till after her birthday, just out of fairness. And um, so hearing them early, I'm always a little bit funny about it. But being in those Christmas markets was so like mm. it was so festive, and hearing those songs. So I guess I'm into Christmas now. What I was going to ask was, <laughs> do you have any Christmas uh, favorite Christmas movies that you're maybe looking Ooh. forward to watching oh. when it comes to December? Go my on, goodness. Well, we have a tradition. We have to in our family watch. Um, two Christmas movies. So my husband and I get a choice each and oh. we have to honour that decision and that will be watched, they'll be watched in the run-up to Christmas. Um, and, oh, I'm going to say something that's going to cause controversy now, but my husband will... <laughs> I love you, Michael. My husband will pick a film that I might question if it can be classed as a Christmas film. Okay. Oh, and, uh -huh. I wonder what you're um, going to say. <laughs> oh, I wonder which one. <laughs> there is one which I guess there's a 50 50 split. Which, what do you think I'm going to say? Living Gently. <laughs> Living that gently. Die Hard. It's die Hard. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Living Gently. I think it's going that to one? be <laughs> starring, starring Patrick Swayze. Uh, <laughs> Patrick Swayze and Living Gently. Um, Die Hard. Dances up the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> Die Hard is the one. And I, I just go, oh, but it's not It's not really a Christmas film. Um, that and, and Gremlins is often <sighs> hot on the list. And I, and I have to concede that is very Christmassy and it is set in, around Christmas time. But it yeah. doesn't give you the Christmas feels. It right. makes you scared and it's yes. full of gremlins and monsters and that doesn't that doesn't wash with me for christmas so i'm more of a traditionalist <laughs> um muppets christmas carol oh. i mean that would be my first choice um or it's a wonderful life lovely lovely yeah. ending lovely yes that's actually the best way to describe yes. it's a wonderful life lovely lovely it, film 
Lovely and, ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely ending, I suppose. Yeah. Lovely ending. Exactly. It ends well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> um, so, yes, we. I, I, I would say if I had to pick one, it has to be a Muppet's Christmas Carol. Every time. It just has everything. I Michael still think... Kane, <laughs> yeah, I, I make okay makes it. I I do think that is the best, and at least my favorite adaptation of a Christmas Carol is the Muppets mm. one. Mm. Oh. Anyway, mm. beautiful. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, Michael Caine is, is Scrooge. I mean, he's a Scrooge. I mean, you're on to a winner, aren't you? Classic. And has Muppets. <laughs> and has Muppets <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I think probably it's got to have one of the saddest scenes for like. Even like just any film in general, it's the the scene when when they're looking over at the the empty chair, and you're like, oh, I know. yeah, it's um, that was just so sad, and it's it's Kermit's speech just ah, breaks me every time. <laughs> I know every I time. Know. The little know. cap you know, and the little cane. Uh, oh, by the fire! I it's, know. And it's just like, well, you know, can we all raise a glass to Tiny Tim? And you're like. <laughs> there he goes. I was going to say, how long is it going to take for? Uh... <laughs> that was about twenty minutes. <laughs> no, I love it. I want to do the rest of the episode as uh, Kermit the Frog. Um, yeah, I do love. I do love Muppets Christmas Carol. Um, it's always one to go to. Like, I want to go out to Die Hard for a second because uh, I understand the debates, right? Whether it's a Christmas film or not, it's not particularly Christmassy. But I think the rule has to be. Is the film if the film is set at Christmas, mm. then it's a Christmas film. It's a Christmas movie, yeah. Um, so do I watch Die Hard every single Christmas? I do, uh, yeah. <laughs> but not on Christmas <laughs> Eve. Not on Christmas no. Eve, but maybe early December. I love. I think Die Hard maybe my favorite like action movie, um, oh. and it is a film that you can watch at any point in the year. But mm. it yeah. is also set at Christmas. It's all about him trying to save his family to get home safely to his wife. To give him this big massive teddy bear, that's <laughs> got to be Christmas in my book. But I understand the debate. There's just folk being shot and stuff, so I suppose it's not very festive. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, yeah. fair enough. I think I think that's just because in my eyes it is such a big action film and a brilliant yeah. one at that. Um, and obviously the wonderful Alan Rickman giving a standout performance there, <laughs> Hans Gruber. Um, yeah. It is very watchable and good fun. I just think, as you say, you can watch it any time. Let's say that's fair. Christmas, yeah, you know. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's an excellent watch. <laughs> have you have you both seen Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? No, it's on the watch list. No, Ooh, so I haven't seen it for a long time. Many moons ago, I must have been quite small. I think the last time I saw it, but. I so, I mean, I, definitely worth a rewatch, and, and Greg, mm -hmm. I would recommend it for this mm -hmm. year, right? It is okay. technically a Thanksgiving mm -hmm. movie because mm -hmm. it's all about both the main characters, Steve Martin and John Candy, trying to get home for Thanksgiving. But they, they kind of mentioned, like, we're going home for the holidays, um, and right. there's snow everywhere. So, to me, that's a Christmas film. You know what I mean? So, like, when, <laughs> when people say, you know, give me your top five, top ten Christmas films, it's always on there. Yeah. Um, and I think people forget about it sometimes. So, that's one that I always love. But my favourite ones, my top three, Polar Express, oh. Elf, and Elf. Home Alone. Got to be the best three, in my opinion, our favourite oh, ones. Polar nice. Express. I've, I, so I've whipped, it, whipped out another steelbook for audio listeners. This is the this came literally last week of the oh, Polar oh, Express. Very nice. It's oh. absolutely stunning. And it's in 4K, so it's getting to see those scary animations <laughs> in full 4K. But I think oh, this like the homeless guy on be... the roof and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But this has got to be one of the nicest ones because it is just the train all oh, the way wow. along it. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. stunning. That is um, stunning. But I'm I'm with you there. Polar Express. Every year, the first Christmas movie that goes on is Home Alone because it mm -hmm. just sets the tone. For the rest of the season. Yeah, one of my favourite movies um, of all time. Top five. Oh, it's just so good. Um, but for the first time ever, I uh, not last year, the year before, I saw the the Richard Attenborough Miracle on 34th mm. Street. Uh, Great one. Oh, that was such a good film. And there's a um there's a particular scene in it where he's he's as he's Santa in a department store, and then a young 
girl comes and sits on his knee and the mom just says, oh, well, she, she's deaf. You, you don't have to yeah. say anything to her. She just wanted to say hello. And he just speaks to her then in sign. I, honest to God, I absolutely crumb the first time I saw that. I thought that was one of the most powerful scenes I've ever seen. And, and it was so feel good. Um, and like real movie magic and because yeah. I didn't know anything about the film didn't know this was coming up it just hit me like a like a sleigh oh, it, was, like a Christmas it, was, sleigh. it was so a Chris, <laughs> it hit me like a Christmas sleigh and all the reindeer as well it was um, it was yeah that, that was that was so powerful so that's always one that goes on I'm, I'm with you guys Gremlins I, I love it it's also just one of my favourite films yeah. it's up there, but I'm not going to reach it. <laughs> so, I was going to say, all these have been very convenient that you've been able just to go, yeah. oh, there's Well, they're there. all conveniently <laughs> just at the side, like this one I prepared earlier, yes. <laughs> um, no, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. And like, we, um, I even put our Christmas tree, I'm literally looking at it now, We I put our Christmas tree up yesterday, because hmm. uh, my other half, Lucy's going to, uh, off on Panto in about a week's time, so, but she's not oh. here for the whole Christmas period. Right. So we thought, well, let's let's have it a little bit early. So that she's at least, you know, the tree set up for a little while. Yeah, absolutely. We'll send our yes, best to Lucy for a panto run. Yes. Thank yeah, you very much. Run. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So we got in the spirit yesterday. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm. uh, I'm a, a Polar Express, Home Alone, and Elf viewer around Christmas Eve. Like they're like the ones that I, I go to, and I have to shout out Home Alone Two as well. I think they're. I mean, Home Alone Two is very Christmassy. Um, whereas yes. Home Alone 1 is like more of like my favourite film kind of you know top favourite film yeah. itself but again yeah. my strict rule is just Christmas Eve so I'm I'm very excited um, for this upcoming festive period we also have on Disney Plus I think or maybe it's Netflix I can't remember but there is the the Santa Claus TV show Disney Plus yeah coming out, yeah with uh, Tim yeah. Allen reprising the role mm-hmm. of SC Scott Calvin mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. And it's I don't know what they're going to do, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's based on the same story. So I'm looking for I like that one too. I think the Santa Claus is really good. I don't love the sequels, but I think the first one is really good. Yeah, yeah, that was a very very good film and such like a unique idea as well. Mm. Yeah, um, really really interesting kind of look way to look at it. So um, yeah. yeah, interested to see where they go with that one. There's um, so much. We're we're really sport for choice in terms of festive films, really, right. aren't we? And I think um and I think I I don't think it's ever too early to to get started on them. We're in we're in November now, nearly no. the end of November. Nearly the end of November, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean I've done all my Christmas shopping to be honest, not to brag, but I, I have actually yes. uh, <laughs> super organized. I haven't got the tree up just yet, but yeah. um but no, let's I had my first mince pie yesterday. Oh you you I mean Christmas could be I'm tomorrow. Like, I mean, I'm ahead of the game. I'll just do it now. I'll get it over with. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. After this, I'll send you my address. And then if you've already done your Christmas shopping, <laughs> you'll get plenty of time to send us something. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, as, uh, as, as making your debut on the podcast, Leanne, I have to ask you the customary good bit question. Indeed. And that is, can you remember the first time you went to the cinema? And if not, do you have any early memories of watching movies from when you were a kid? Well... I do remember. I don't know whether anybody else experienced severe trauma as a child going to the cinema, oh. emotional <laughs> trauma. So my first film was Bambi. And oh it set me up for well. for life. <laughs> um, that was, well, that's my first memory of, of going to the cinema. And at the time, of course, now if you're going to a film, you can research mm. it, you can basically find out the entire storyline before you go spoilers etc at the time i there was no was really telling what you were going to go see other than it's been advertised as this, this lovely you know animated film for children oh my god <laughs> I was, by the end i was in absolute floods of tears i was yeah. beside myself and and as a child, I remember crying a lot um, in the cinema. Perhaps I was just overly sensitive, but you know, we had Bambi and The Lion King, and and I remember watching Edward Scissorhands a little bit older at the cinema. And even now, I can't watch past the opening credits without starting to cry. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's 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 carried on because now I I really can't watch films that I know are going to make me sob. If I've seen them before and they've they've ended up and I, I've been in tears, 
that I put them back on the shelf. So it's a write off. Yeah, that's a write off. No, um, and uh, yeah, sorry, I put a real downer on this whole podcast. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Just little Leanne crying in the cinema. Um, but that was my first experience. But I do remember some fantastic times as well. I saw Jurassic Park in the cinema, which was so lucky. Ah, oh, extraordinary experience. Um, and uh, yeah, but that they, they've really stuck out in my mind. Um, and uh, that's why I think I'd, I'd love to go to a film, actually, thinking about that. Go, go see a film without reading mm all about mm. it beforehand i do that quite a lot i spoil it for myself um before i go and actually see it on screen so i'm gonna next time i go to see a film i'm gonna not even see any watch any reviews no. or anything about it i'm just gonna go in and be fresh yeah. um but yeah that was that was my that was my I, I try to avoid like spoilers and stuff as much as possible but like when you get trailers especially for the big films I mean, there's Mm. so much in the trailer. I understand why they need to do it, and it obviously works, Mm. and it gets everybody excited for it. But, like, honestly, I'll try and avoid them, you know, because I like to go in blind, you know, and and totally. Mm. What was the film I saw earlier this year? It was called The Duke, um, and I had no idea. It was just, like, we were doing this thing. We were going every Tuesday or whatever. It was like, what's on tonight? It's the only one we've not seen. Let's go for Mm -hmm. it. And it was, I mean, it wasn't the greatest film of all time, but it was such a lovely sort of Mm. hour and a half British film. You know, it was like, Mm. oh, where did that come from? I would never have seen that beforehand, you know? So things like that. What is it? Is it it Friends? um, Is it maybe Phoebe and Friends that like her mum turned off Bambi before the trauma? Oh, it wasn't Bambi. It was something else. Oh, yeah. She's never seen the ending. Never seen the ending. (laughs) Oh, it it was a... it, maybe it was. It was a wonderful. It was the, it's it was the dog. Guy. What's it called Old Yeller. Oh. It was Old Yeller. Oh, that's, it. that's yes. what it is. Yes, <laughs> not Bambi. Uh, I'm definitely having an off day today. But um, <laughs> when it comes to people in films and death of animals, um, but listen, uh, people should take note of that. Like, if you have got like a really sad ending and you watched it with your children. Like, yeah. <laughs> stop now. Yeah. And I yeah. was with my dear dad, and he was fast asleep beside me in the, oh. in the front row <laughs> and I was streaming down but oh. um but you know it's a lesson learned <laughs> early on yeah absolutely um, but uh the great film still I mean I, yeah. I don't think I've watched it since um but perhaps I should <laughs> review it now as an older person and just cleanse myself and know that it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I think um, you can't judge it. If, if, so if you don't cry this time, you can't judge it that it's any less of a film because you know it's coming, you know, Indeed. you're going to be like, Oh, I'm going to cry now. And it just might not happen. So <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not much of a cry. I have to say I'm really lucky. Um, but I just don't, I don't cry as much in, in, in the films when it does happen though. I'm like, Whoa, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and I more so cry. <laughs> And it's in my most shed a tear, I suppose, if it's like something epic or, you know, like we're finally seeing something like we went to see the new, the, those new Star Wars films and stuff and maybe like um, mm. Avengers Endgame, things like that, like big moments, you know, mm. you might shed a tear. But um, yeah, I don't know. What about you, Greg? Are you, are you an emotional wreck at the cinema? <laughs> I, I th- just in life, I am. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, yeah. Um, oh, I, I like, I, I know. <laughs> Um, me too, no, me too, I, I'm just, Exactly, we'd like two pieces of pod. We just cried. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing um, wrong with no, it. No, I, I do. And I, I get it from my mum. And I wouldn't have it any other way at all. Like, mm. me and my mum can cry at adverts. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, um, I was just trying to think. I definitely, I know, like, I know what you're talking about, the feeling when something can be so epic that it mm. you know, really like, brings you to tears. Mm. Like, Overwhelmed, I, yeah. I vividly remember finally going to see the Force Awakens, you know, yeah, our first too, yeah. Star Wars new, new, first new Star Wars movie in so long, mm. and like I, I went into the cinema with earphones in, playing music, so that even if there was a chance that anybody walking out of the cinema was talking about it, yeah, because um, I just finished work and I was, I went straight from d- straight from the job at the time, o- over to the cinema, and I thought, oh, if anybody spoils this, I think it, it will break me. Um, and so I sat down and had music playing all the way until it got to like, there's always like when they start to show like new movie trailers before the film begins, I got about halfway through them. Cause I thought oh, if someone's already seen it and they're talking behind me, they've had a chance now. So I finally took them out. And I went to see it in IMAX and the mm. moment that the whole cinema went dark 
I knew had a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away come up. And then the middle yes. in at that, I just, boom, eyes yes. flooded. I was like, <gasps> no, we're, here. we're here. We're here. We're yeah. here. This, it's <laughs> happening. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to think. Like, there's certain films that can always like, pull on my heartstrings. There's one movie that if, if anybody out there, or especially you guys, like, it's a really incredibly, incredibly powerful movie called Pay It Forward. Mm. It's um, you know, it's got a cast member in it that is under like severe controversy now because it's um, it's Mr. Kevin Spacey. Mm. Um, but this film came out oh maybe ninety five, ninety six ish time. Um, incredibly powerful message behind the whole film. Mm. But I, it, honest, honestly, I think it has one of the, if not the most heartbreaking ending. It's just got a sad ending. Mm. There's no. There's no light to it. There's no joy. It's just sad. Um, and I I remember being on a, I was on a flight to New Zealand at the time with my folks and I, me and my mum were watching it at the same time. My dad was sat in between us. And I must've been about 10 minutes ahead because I finished it, put something else on and I looked over. Oh God. My mum's just in absolute floods of tears. Oh. Um, and I just said to her, have you got to the bit? And she's like, <laughs> yes. So, um, <laughs> It's a, it's a brilliant, brilliant film, but it's just one of those things to prep that it's, it's a heart, like heartbreaking ending, yeah. but it's a fantastic film. If you know, you have to kind of push aside, like knowing kind of like what we know now of, of, you know, particular right. cast members, but it was, um, it's a brilliant movie mm. in itself. Um, yeah. So it was a very long winded answer to say, yes, I cried a lot. <laughs> <in some films. laughs> yes. Yes. That is fair. That is fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Let's chat about today's choice of film um, <laughs> chosen by Leanne. Tell us why. So it's Labyrinth from 1986, right? 1986. That's yes. right. Yeah. Why, why Labyrinth? Oh, Jim Henson. I mean, what's not to love? It's just. I watched it not at the cinema. I was, I would have been only two years old when it was released. Um, so I think I watched it when I was about seven or eight, first of all. And it just hit something within me that uh, I, I'd never seen anything like it before. And it was a big fantasy, fairy tale, action packed film, but it completely subversed the idea of the traditional fairy tale. And mm. you have this this really strong heroine, Sarah, who actually in the first instance isn't particularly nice. She's, um, you know, she's spoiled and she's not very nice to her family. And um, she gives her, her baby brother away to, to goblins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Willingly. Yeah. I'll um, write you off yeah. as sister of the year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, but she has this incredible arc and ultimately yeah. learns so many lessons throughout and, I thought, wow, she's incredible and she's wearing this really funky gear and she's a tomboy and she's doing this for herself and she's strong and brave. But And also we have so many familiar elements like little fairies who we, we, we've read about in fairy stories, but these ones are vicious and they bite you and mm. um, it's, yeah. it's, it's all about <laughs> things being not what they seem. And, and of course, David Bowie, who... At the time, I had no idea who he was. I didn't realize he was a huge musical icon. I just saw him mm. as Jareth the Goblin King, who, you know, let's face it, exactly the same. You know, he he was he was yeah. probably my first little crush. <laughs> nice. um, just you know, seeing him come on screen with this gorgeous hair and makeup <laughs> and very tight fitting pants. <laughs> so so tight. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I just yeah. loved it from start to finish it was just so pacey and enjoyable and um I, I just I, I loved it ever since and I watch it constantly even now even now I see things in there that I I hadn't spotted originally that's like the the key to your favorite film though right when mm. you can watch it so many times and you know you're still discovering things even even if it's just like an opinion you know your, your opinion yeah. has evolved over time if mm -hmm. that can still happen the more times you watch it then that's like easily yeah. a top five film of all time you know yeah yeah all those little details little yeah. nuances um it's so clever and i think i think at the time when it was first released it was a it was a flop i don't think it did particularly well mm. and it lost quite a lot of money so it's one of those ones that 
perhaps the target audience wasn't realized because it is an adventure for for the family but is it for mm. very small children is it for is it kids for, yeah yeah it's it's sort of that, that balancing act um but i i just think it's it's joyous it's uh, some of those characters i oh, just love oh. i mean ludo and hoggle and sedidibus oh sedidibus <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What about um, you, Greg? What, what do you think of it? Is it one that you watched when you were really wee as well, or was it a, oh, a later oh, constantly? Life one? Yeah, no, constantly. Like I am um, in the summer, uh, in like in in primary school, I always used to go to this thing called Holiday Club because like grandparents lived further away and folks were working, so I was going to this. It was like a thing that like a local college did, where you could go and like do loads of activities, but they cool. they had a an old TV set with a video player. And I think I nearly wore out the tape of Labyrinth just oh. over and over and over again. Um, it's just so magical. It takes all the tropes of fantasy characters, flips them on their head. Cause you know, you have them, um, you've got Ludo, who's this big hulking, huge monster that mm. should be terrifying. But yet in reality, he's this lovable and adorable creature that just wants to help people out. You've got um, Hoggle, who's this, Let's be honest. He's not the he's not the most lovely of characters to like look at, but deep in his heart, he's gorgeous. And then, yeah, I just I think it's this it's it's a wonderful story. The songs are really great as well. I mean, yeah. Luce and I continuously sing. You remind me of the babe. What babe? <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's that that Classic. is that's such an amazing song. Yeah. Um, but just the fact that it's just you can't beat practical effects as well. Like you look back at that film and you can see why things like Star Wars have now started going back to using practical effects because mm -hmm. it feels more magical than CGI. Mm. As great as and you know as wonderful as CGI allows things to do, mm. there's something so amazing about knowing that th that character was physically there. That's um, that. Yeah, but I, I love it. I think it's such a great film. The, the 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 puppetry is just obviously astonishing and i think um speaking about cgi i think um the owl so in the opening credits um where we see yeah. the owl flying um i think that might be one of the first cgi animals that mm, really? we've, we've ever seen <laughs> um and looking at it now obviously it, it i mean it's it's not the greatest effect it's, but it still really works yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And it's yeah, yeah. Very, very new for its time. Um, but I have a fact, Greg. I think you might appreciate this very much, and oh, I just want to make sure okay. I've got the names right. Um, Gates, Gates McFadden, Doctor Beverly Crusher in Star Trek: The Next Generation. Gates McFadden. Oh, okay. Okay. Doctor Beverly Crusher. Where's? Oh, Will Wheaton. No, I think she was. The director of puppetry choreography and movement for the puppets but she was under oh. the alias of cheryl um okay. cheryl mcfadden oh. does that i okay. don't know if i i might have just plucked no, out i'm not too sure not not that I, that might have made that up completely but anyway <laughs> no no totally. i'm just looking yeah. here uh, oh yeah 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 um so yeah but uh yes those those oh those puppets are, are so lovely and ludo i don't know if you've ever oh. noticed that his one of his arms is quite still to the side of his body, um, uh. and it's because he, there's a person doing head and doing other arm, oh, and then there's course. nothing doing this other arm. And it's only so, it's not something I'd ever noticed before until fairly recently. It's just quite a static arm because the oh, person's eyes didn't notice that. <laughs> it's oh. very clever. It's gorgeous. Never noticed that before, right? On the next watch, I'm like, <laughs> <arm> moving. <laughs> it's... Yeah, you're so right, though, about like oh, the, the physical people being there. Um, mm. it makes such a difference. I don't know if it just adds to the kind of the the uh, uh comfort of it, you know what I mean? Where you watch mm. like a comfort film yeah. for that's like a warm hug, mm. you know, you're getting to see them right yeah. there. It's mm. like, um, I think all these great behind the scenes documentaries on Disney Plus and Netflix are great. Um, because it's very interesting, especially for people like us who are in the industry that are really like interested in learning about that stuff and what it would be like to work mm -hmm. with these people. Um, but shows like like The Mandalorian, for example, mm -hmm. a lot of it, or the, or the Book of Boba Fett, a lot of the time it's set in the desert, right? So mm -hmm. I know Star Wars, and I know a lot of the original films were filmed 
in the desert. It was really filmed there and there was lots of physical effects and um, actual practical people there. Mm. And pra practical uh, creatures, I guess. But then when you watch these behind the scenes thing, you see, oh, well, it was just surrounded by blue screen and they weren't really in the desert. And not that it takes away mm. from it because it still looks incredible. You know, the, the mm. achievements that we have now in special effects should not be like laughed at. But it's like, oh, well, I kind of like that the thought of them being in the desert, being absolutely roasting, uh, working with these people that are in these costumes, you know, and then mm. watching a film like this was really like, oh, man, like that's what it used to be like all the time, where regardless of where you were filming, if you had, you had to build this set, you had to build these characters. And it just mm. makes you, I feel like the connection becomes stronger between you and the characters if you know yeah. their physical beings. Like Yoda in the original films, you know, yeah. like people think he's so much more lovable than the prequels, not just because he's older, but because he's actually there, mm -hmm. you know, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Just, it just adds to the realism in, mm. in, yeah. a, in, a, in a fantasy setting because yeah. you're like, oh, okay. Well, they could really, I remember the first time that we ever saw BB-8. Right. Um, because I remember the trailer for it. It was like, oh, okay, it's a CGI robot. And then, when they whipped out the real thing, or like I think it was like a Star Wars celebration or something like that, and they rolled him on stage, and you're like, "This is incredible! It's like it's a ball that rolls, yet the head is always static on top." And so emotive, and, somehow. Mm. Yeah. So for two, you know, for yeah. a, a a ball and a half uh, sphere, and yet <laughs> it's this little yeah. character that is sold so much merchandise and is absolutely beloved you know I, I anybody can say what they like about the the sequel series you can't fault the like droids and the little totally. characters like bb8 and stuff mm -hmm. because they they just they add to it all and we've we've got that connection with you know characters like r2d2 and c3po where it's like they, they're just just programmed to just help and you're like oh yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely but i'm with you one of my um, yeah. one of my favorite moments from the whole sequel series is when like it's in Force Awakens and Finn is like giving BB like a thumbs up and then this thing yes. comes out like this. But I always <laughs> yeah. thought it was like I, I thought yeah. it was I got it more like it was his middle finger. You know what I mean? Really? Like, like flipping him really? off, you know? Yeah. Gosh, how <laughs> rude. Just, just sticks out that little lighter as a thumbs so up. Funny. I was like, so oh, it was so clever. It's so funny. It's so there's um, little touches. It's it's just adorable. And as you say, it just makes you feel like yeah, these are real. These are real little little beings. Yeah, um, the definitely. smallest, the one of the smallest little creatures in Labyrinth is the worm, which oh. which I I know, Greg. I know we both both love the little worm, <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. and has a tiny part in the film. Actually, by all accounts, um, doesn't have many lines, but is is one that's probably one of my favorite little little creatures. I don't think he even has a worm, um, a name. It's just. Worm. The, the worm, worm. Yeah. very the worm. very cute though, very Thank cute, you and you worm. and you still connect to it, you know, yeah. or him. I don't want to, I don't know who yeah. it is, but yeah, yeah, um, um, yeah, yes, it's um... a little scarf and everything. You're like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, this worm has got a little red scarf on. <laughs> this is so adorable. Yeah, oh, yeah. you're a worm, aren't you? Oh, and, he, and, he, oh. and he's just like, he's like, inside, meet the missus, and you're like. Oh, all he wants to do is just give you warmth and let you meet his other half. This is adorable. Come yeah. meet the messes. That's Come so meet cute. The I know. And it just raises so many questions because, you know, there's a little hole there where the worm goes in. Yeah. How's yeah. Sarah going to get in? We want to find out. Um, that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's again one of the, those little magic moments that you think, oh, well, that's perfect. Yeah. They, they couldn't have done yeah. any better. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, Jennifer Connolly playing Sarah, mm. as you say, was quite an inspiration to yourself, Leanne, back when you mm. were wee. Um, oh. Great, strong character, yeah. you know, and totally underrated, I yeah. must say. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. I think, you know, I think um, a little Helena Bonham Carter was up mm. for that role at one point, which would have been really, really? different. Um, but really? yes, wow. tiny Jennifer Connolly, who was 14 at the wow. time of filming. I think she's playing a 16 year old, but she was 14. But um, this incredible actor, what what a, what a mature performer mm -hmm. for, for that age. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, looking at this character who is just this girl and she's living in a household that, you know, she's she's not particularly happy with because she feels like she's being unjustly um, 
used by her stepmother and be made to look after her the baby brother and um but she is someone we can relate to because she's this average person she's not a superhero she's just uh just this, this young girl um who falls into this world of of magic and um having to navigate the labyrinth obviously the title of the film um and then becomes something else at the end of it she's found the value of friendship she's grown up she's given away material things she's sort of it's a coming of age film in a way as well she's she's let go mm. of, of all that all her childhood toys and um come out of it a lot stronger and made these unlikely friendships that she carries with her throughout the film and in the end as well um they're there for her at the the very end of the of the finale in her room and yeah that's really sweet um, it's such it's such mm. a sweet a sweet thing and perhaps it's focusing on somebody who is maybe a little bit of an outcast. And we see her at the start um, dressed in a sort of almost medieval type dress mm. and she's reading poetry and she's by herself but with her, with her dog. Oh, Merlin, the dog. Merlin, Merlin oh. slash Ambrosius. <laughs> Ambrosius? <laughs> I mean, I, again, wonderful because they that you can tell completely when you're working with the real dog and then with the puppet dog because with the puppet, yeah yeah this big black nose <laughs> it's just beautiful and suddenly a lot more expressive um but uh i definitely i definitely resonated a lot with with her as a character i thought she was fantastic and as well the moment where she she eats the sort of hypnotic fruit that sends her off into mm the ball, the masked ball with the Jareth. Yeah. And then she's wearing this big oh. floaty fairy tale dress and her hair is big and gorgeous. And I'm like, oh, that's what I want to be when I get married. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, wonderful. The entire, her entire journey is, is fabulous. That's a really kind of significant journey though, right? Like, mm. I guess I didn't take oh, it that account huge. until you mentioned it there, but yeah, like mm. total coming of age film for that, for, yeah. for a period of films that came out around that decade. There weren't many like coming of age films for like young women really mm. at that time, was there? It was all about like American teenage guys and stuff, and so I guess that's a sort of yeah. uh, area of of the of the film that you could look at and go, "This is actually really inspirational," you yeah. know? Yeah, um, definitely. It's it's something that I hadn't seen before and haven't really since either. I mean, there, there's so much symbolism there as well, and when she gives Lance a lot, her precious teddy bear to her, her little baby brother Toby and says this is for you now and and then understands the importance of family and the importance of him and um it was it's it's real and and that that's such a an emotional moment as well because it's something I think that we can all relate to and think yeah I, I remember a time when I had to give away childish things yeah. and and become something else and grow up it's uh Th yeah there's there's a film that made me cry Toy Story 3 oh my oh, god stop <laughs> <laughs> that's on oh. the list of films i can't watch again because it made me really? feel so hard <laughs> yeah it's the so long partner <laughs> oh. oh we'd already had the furnace scene and then it's just <laughs> oh, the one. Oh, it's, my seeing God. The kid, it's seeing andy drive off and he's he doesn't need them anymore they yeah. serve their purpose. I'm like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> do you know what was great though see the late year film that came out this year Really good, mm, very good, very good, very good. They're actually really emotional mm. when he's doing this journey to the moon and back. But by the time he oh. gets there, it's like different uh, time in terms of the amount of years that have passed in our time that it would be in space time. Mm. And uh, it goes there and back, there and back, there and back, and he almost misses so much of his real life. And it's such an emotional scene. How is it that these yeah. animated films, especially in the Toy Story saga, mm. <laughs> yeah. just destroy you? It's horrid, but also so lovely. Hey. Pixar have got this knack for yeah. really tapping into emotion. I mean, uh, like the the opening scene from Up of seeing oh. the life that Car that Carl and Ellie have together. It's like I I always think that like Luce and I look really like Carl and Ellie, and we're always just like, <laughs> let's just let's just not have it the same way. Thanks, but, um, <laughs> but we yeah, uh, it's it's oh, I just I don't know they. they um, I don't think Pixar are afraid to be a little bit more um, mature when it's needed, and mm. they 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 play in the element of death because I know fair enough that like Disney films the the characters die, but it's always 
like off screen, but whereas Pixar feels a lot more um, human and mm. real. And I think that's what I think anybody that watches that opening kind of like montage within Up can immediately connect with some part of it. Yeah. And it's the way that the music's composed and the shots that are done. And yet not a single line of dialogue is uttered in that entire montage. And yet powerful. it tells a thousand lifetimes of stories yeah. without a single word being said. It's so, oh, yeah. so powerful. It's like um, the same with like um Inside Out and um mm-hmm. Wally and things like that. Like these are really kind of heartfelt <laughs> movies too, you know? Yeah. You're um, listing all my vetoed films. These are all films I don't watch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just heart, yeah, heartbreaking and beautiful, and just so well told. They're just, um, yeah. I, I think Toy Story, all of them have a lot to answer for. Me being now a thirty-something-year-old <laughs> woman, and I have so many cuddly toys that I can't bear to part with. <laughs> you have a lot to answer they're... for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. For fear they're going to miss me. <laughs> yeah. I've, got to, I've got to show you this, guys. Last one, last one. But this this Wally book. one. This, oh. this last Wally Steelbook is, it is just him sat on a pile of rubbish looking oh. up to the stars. And it's just this sad, sorrowful look. And like, that's a little robot. And yet you just, you can connect with a character like that more than you could most humans in like, mm-hmm. let's say an action movie, so to say. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's think, just uh... so powerful about it. I think it'll be all right for me to show this, but my mate dressed up as Wally for Halloween. Oh, <gasps> oh my. Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's super. And if you're wondering who that is beside him, that's me uh, with a Chewbacca outfit on, also with a Lakers jersey. I was trying to be Teen Wolf. Um, Very good. Uh, make Michael J. Fox. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> because I'd already been Chewbacca before. I didn't want to just rehash the outfit, so I'll try something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was Halloween. That was a good one. Um, oh, that's excellent. Amazing. In terms of, you have to understand here, guys, right? So I had not seen this film, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. So you, oh. you, you grew up with this film, right? I had no idea what to expect. As soon as the film finished, I'm just sitting there like. <laughs> What on earth? <laughs> what did we just watch? Because it's <laughs> so full of fantasy and magic and stuff. It's not that I mean I didn't expect anything. I didn't know what it was going to be, but just um the fact that the kind of the main story starts really early on, where she's having to go through the labyrinth itself, right, to find her little brother. I was thinking, yeah. right, this is going to be a film. It's going to be like an adventure. She's going to try and you know, she's going to work her way around the labyrinth. She does. I wrote this down. She does say, and I quote, "It doesn't look that hard." <laughs> Did she, is she looking at the same thing? Oh, oh Sarah. It's um, harder than you think. The time is short. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, so she, I know. That's very good. It's so true. She's, she yeah. takes it all in her stride, doesn't she? Nothing yeah. nothing faces her. It's like, okay, this is happening. All right, let's, I'm gonna let's go for it. Let's go for it. <laughs> yeah, like, it is. It's technically, technically the world she created herself through all her poetry and when she's you know talking yeah. about the Goblin King. Yeah. So it's it's the world in which she's envisioned and she wants to kind of like live in and play in and now she's got to do it for real. I Ooh. think you throw in that element of the fact that she's racing against the clock in mm. a world that she's kind of like had in her head that is now everything is out to make her fail. It's a very uh, deep underlying message. In Absolutely. Life. Um, True, yeah, and you know, then then when Bowie first appears, um, that kind of like I like iconic out of nowhere with the hair, and I should say the very oh. tight uh, outfit. <laughs> um, it is meant to be this like iconic moment, this big significant moment in not only this film but his career. Um, mm. and I was just I was just hit right in the face with him, um, and I was like, whoa, where's this going? And then. When I obviously we spoke about the, the kind of practical characters, the practical effects, the puppets and stuff, I didn't expect them to be so lovable mm. and so funny. Mm. Um, my favorite ones were the were the two kind of characters on the doors, oh, and they're like yes. it's like the two old guys from the Muppets, like they're kind of yes. bantering back and forth. Um, yeah. As fans of the films, out of the kind of practical effects, I, I go into practical effects, but the, the practical characters. Who are some of your favorite ones that you can that are the most memorable? Obviously, you mentioned Ludo. Um, which I obviously got like Chewbacca vibes from. Um, I know George Lucas was an, ex- an executive producer on the film. Yeah. Um, who else do you like in terms of those characters? Is Hoggle the one? Is he the main one? 
Go on, Leanne. Oh, oh shall I? Um, yeah, oh, yeah. my goodness. I The thing is, as you say, there are so many little characters involved that don't have huge parts and they don't mm. sort of add a great deal to the story, but they're still so relevant. Um, and I think, yeah, the Knockers are fantastic. They're, they're a hilarious comedy duo. Actually, there are there are quite a few comedy duos who are who are almost like grumpy old married couples and i like um the 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 well i would say man the, the creature who has the bird on top of his oh, head yes i'm not sure what his name is but he's there to <laughs> offer words of wisdom and then ends up falling asleep um and then the the bird creature is sort of saying we well, you know i must make a donation um just these two incredibly quirky beings yeah. i mean who are they what are their story that, that they just appear from nowhere and fall asleep and that's the end of her interaction with them it's just perfect i just i just love that the fact that the bird always constantly winds the 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 <laughs> human side of it up he's like yes. <laughs> he's like bring you me quiet. <laughs> that's yeah. so good yes. it's just constantly winds up and yeah. you've got that stuck on your head permanently <laughs> yeah it's so stimulating in your head <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Greg, and, it's, it's just wild that you watch any film and any character and then you could just do the voice it's, so it's a cur- it's a cur- it's a curse man it's i i they're all stuck in my oh. head constantly <laughs> it's a gift it's fantastic um i have to say <laughs> i um so i i mean i i am greg jones's Agent, I'm very proud to, to say that I represent ba, 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 ba. him. Any grand talent? Um, <laughs> Big revelation there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, and every now and again, because Greg knows certain characters that I love, send oh, me yeah. just a little a little WhatsApp voice note with a with an impersonation, or an impression, and just makes my day. It's absolutely delightful. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so it's it's very much a gift. I would say not very a impressive. <laughs> Um, but uh, but yeah that's um, I think all those little little interactions like the 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 strange little beings that live under the the um, the floor and they move the tiles when she's drawing on her lips quite creepy right yeah yeah creepy like that's and and there is it is quite creepy there is that spooky element especially when Toby first goes missing and the lights go out in her house and She's trying to turn them back on and she's calling his name and there's that little appearing. ripple. Yeah. yeah, there's something under the covers. Mm. It's very fairy changeling where, where the baby gets kidnapped and replaced by something else. Um, mm. So it's spooky, scary, scary as well. Um, and goblins living in your, your closet as standard. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, the nicest thought for children, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh. um, but um, Greg, you're so right. It's something I hadn't even thought about before um was that this is a really familiar world she has a whole story yeah. about yeah. about it so much so that she she knows the lines up to up to the final line that she keeps mm. forgetting <laughs> yeah it's well it's it, it, literally her like kind of opening monologue is all about the fact that don't she talk about the fact that the goblin king's in love with her but then yeah. there's mm. like a betrayal and then you know it, it's to me i always there was a time where I thought maybe it's like a lucid dream that she's had, mm. and it, but then obviously when all the friend when all the characters appear at the end, I'm like, oh okay, no, so it was real. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I always it's always just stuck with me that it's it's a world in which she's possibly created, like mm. in her head, she's now living in it, and it is constantly trying to make her fail, and that I always stuck with me that because you know all the little creatures that are under the tiles and. Yeah. The fact that, like, um, you know, you've got all the helping hands. Uh, <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? We are helping. You helping hands. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but they're always constantly trying to make a fail, and all these things that pop up. And then uh, is it is it called the cleaver? Where it's that huge machine on uh, that's oh, in the oh my tunnel. goodness, um, yeah. which that is horrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yes, I, it always just stuck with me that it's. It's a real, like, real adventure, mm. but constantly oh, yeah. against the clock, and yes. um, and everything's just out to try and make a fail to prove herself, really. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Wow. Really yeah. deep. Me. Like, and obviously, again, this is fresh in my mind. So, I'm, I'm, this is very educational here yeah. to fans <laughs> of the film. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what it means. <laughs> um, Greg, can you do a Hoggle impression? 
you can do his voice. Cam. Oh yes, yeah. So it's like <laughs> I'm just trying to think of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, because he's sort of hey, well. I'll I'll do like a David Barry to like sink into it. It's yeah. like, well, 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 Sarah. <laughs> but he's kind of like, what's this? Oh, so this is in the moment where I'm I normally have all this riding around my head. <laughs> no, um, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. Um so, uh, oh, I'm just trying to think what on earth's a line that Hoggle says. He's like, well, Edward. He's like, Hoggle. Oh. Well, what are you going to do that for? Giving me a kiss. <laughs> like, oh, it's so good. Oh. Uh, no, your majesty. I was just taking her back to the labyrinth. <laughs> it's like, well, well, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah. adorable. It's and so funny. He's getting no, his name uh, wrong all the time. Constantly yeah, getting uh, it wrong. It's like, um, Edward. <laughs> and Hoggle just goes, Hoggle. <laughs> <That's laughs> so correct it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. I think um, I've got a, I've got such a soft spot for Sir Didymus. He's definitely my character in it because it's always a Ambrosius. No, on my pass without my permission. It's like, oh, well, do do we have your permission? Uh, ooh, yes. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, it's just so sweet, so sweet. Yeah. And they're oh, all man. a little bit, they're all a little bit downtrodden. They're all the underdogs of this world as well. Yeah. That that bandy together to create this little scooby gang and it's yeah. um, oh. who perhaps haven't had friends of their own really and have been ostracized and now they've they found each other so lovely <laughs> oh, um, oh. we're about to cry on the podcast <laughs> here it comes so many layers <laughs> <laughs> it really yeah. is wow yeah um <laughs> So, so many as a, layers to the labyrinth. As a, as a, as a fir- so as a first time watcher then how did you mm. how did you feel Chris <laughs> See that's a, that's a good way to put it instead of being like what did you think of the film it was more mm-hmm. about how did you how did it make you how feel, did it leave you feeling? I, I thoroughly enjoyed that but I, when I was watching that I couldn't help think like I wish I watched it when I was younger because I loved the Muppets I loved Sesame mm-hmm. Street I loved all these things mm-hmm. You know, um, Big Bud and Mickey Mouse, and I, it would have been great, you know, for me when I was so full of imagination and stuff when I was younger. I still am, but in a different way. Um, but when I was a kid, like it was just so, like things like that, practical effects and larger than life, um, uh, things that could be real, you know. Um, I don't know. I just think I really wish I would have watched that when I was younger. Now, you know, having like younger members in, in my family, I've got like a younger cousin that's six and. A younger cousin that's nearly two, so it's like I'm thinking these are films that we can watch now, you know, with him and add that to the thing. So definitely enjoyed it. Um, again, I don't have that special connection to it like you guys do. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to go to it all the time like I would other films, you know. But definitely so much fun. Uh, was laughing out loud a bunch at the wee comments, like for example, like the two doors, what they call the knockers, and one of the rings in his ears, and he just keeps going, "What." Like it keeps like yeah, exactly. he didn't in because it's in his ear. Like we think that's so funny. Like, yeah. it's, it's almost like that really smart eighty style of comedy that is totally lost now. That you'll find in like Police yeah. Squad and Airplane and the Naked Gun and stuff. That is obviously yeah. a little bit more smut based, but like it's still that kind of daft humor. Um, mm. and yeah. me and Greg chatted about the Karate Kid last time on the mm-hmm. podcast. I can't mm. think of more eighties like films like mm. the Karate oh, no. Kid and Labyrinth. Like they're so eighties. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The costumes and the music and the, the music, the, yeah, and all like the synth and like the really, you know, you, you can tell they've done it with like a drum pad and it's <laughs> dum, 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 dum. <laughs> like oh yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. That's when you eighties synth. It's it's brilliant. Um, it's one genre, isn't it? Just the eighties yeah. decade. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is that's so interesting, isn't it? How we have such different perspectives right. depending on when we saw it. And like, there is there is a fear of introducing somebody to a film you've loved growing up and yeah. and the reaction the to it because it's, yeah, as a grown-up, it is going to feel <laughs> like, yeah. very different. <laughs> it's really stressful. Yeah. Please yeah. love it as much as I do. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I'm watching the the Star Wars films with my girlfriend just for the first time that she'd ever seen them. And Mm. like, I just have such a connection to all of them for different reasons, especially the prequels, because that's when I was a kid, you know? Yeah. Um, Yeah. And and funnily enough, she's actually enjoyed the prequels more than the originals. I Mm. think just because maybe my passion for the prequels have come out. Yeah. (laughs) But like, she's asking, maybe it's also like the kind of modern style of acting with like, and mm-hmm. um, Natalie Portman and things like that, you know, she's she's like them as well. But it's been so interesting watching. I've been like, I love 
the Phantom Menace. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know it's, you know, criticised yeah. a lot, so I wonder what it will be like from a kind of younger perspective, you know? So I don't know. It's weird. It's weird watching these films. So I wonder if I was in the same room as you guys watching this film, you two would be like quoting it and laughing. <laughs> oh, at yeah, things. yeah. And I'd be sitting yeah. there going, where is this coming from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. You know? But that yeah, mean I didn't yeah. enjoy the film. It just mm. means it's a totally different perspective, you know? Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know we're running out of time here, but I do want to make sure we get in the, the very important question that this is the Good Bit podcast. I have to ask you what you think the best bit of Labyrinth is, and if you can't think of a best moment, what is your favourite bit? Oh, Greg, you can go first on this one. Put the pressure um, on you. <laughs> or on, on a, a number of bits you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'd say I've got two. I think I love I love the magic dance scene because that song's mm. been stuck in my head since I was a kid. Right. Um, I think that that's just that's a pinnacle of what this movie's all about. You've got David Bowie <laughs> with a load of goblins singing I love about how they're all a, a baby. Like they're all just yeah. Being like, oh yeah. I think of the the amount of puppeteers that must have been in that room to record yeah. to have all of those goblins moving. Um, I think that scene and the worm I just love, oh, I but know. I absolutely adore the characters that are um they're they're at the door, so it's not the knockers, but it's the two shields where they're like one of us will mm. always tell the truth and one of us will always tell the lie. Oh, what a lie! And they're like. <laughs> but it's like, yeah. but I could be telling the truth. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. But then he, be t- and that yeah. always stuck in my mind because yeah. as a kid, I could never work out what on earth they were talking about. <laughs> so I was like, just open a door. <laughs> so, um, so I yeah. think those, I've got about three. I, can, mm. I think if it was just one, I'm going to have to go with the David Bowie song. Yeah, oh. fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I just I love the moment where it just cuts to David Bowie and he's just holding the baby like in his lap, <laughs> like he's just sitting there with the baby in his lap yes. because uh, this is yeah, mine now. Like, yeah. yeah, in nine hours and thirty three minutes, you'll be mine. Oh, I mean, got it down to the T. Yeah. Toby must be living his best life. If I was him, I wouldn't want to go back. I want to live with <laughs> no. the goblins and party and sing. Yeah. And David Bowie. <laughs> Yeah. Take a bye. Um, yeah. and that number is incredible. And there's the, the part I don't even notice this, but at the end, when Jareth is throwing Toby up and down, um, from mm. shot from a distance, um, and you oh, can yeah. see of that course. this baby is is a little bit a <laughs> little bit wobbly. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very not real. <laughs> not yeah, real, exactly. but a lot more hair than yeah, <laughs> than <he's> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very funny. Um, I think. The baby was was the baby played by a baby called Toby, who was the concept designer's son, Brian Froud, maybe. Yeah, to- right. Toby Froud is, is Toby the Froud. name Toby. of that Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Um, oh. But um, all of the musical numbers where David's involved are just super. Um, and I, I love, I love the ballroom scene, which I know is not everybody's favorite because it's it's a very different pace and suddenly yeah. everything slows down mm. um and it is very surreal and dreamlike and um and uh, very magical but i love that i think it's just a really interesting transition and you're wondering how she's going to get out of this one it's completely mesmerizing and and he's dancing with yeah. her and yeah He's surrounded by mirrors and glass and has to break a way through. But I really love that moment. It just, it always made me go, oh, that's, that's something else. That's kind of, um, uh, that, that's really hypnotic. But I think as well, favorite little parts, anything with Ludo, the yeah. way he oh. just, when he falls into that hole behind her and she's, Sarah saying, there's nothing to be afraid of. And he didn't wish he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, Ludo. And when he obviously he calls on the rocks, rocks are his friends and they yeah. come and, and help him out when, when he needs help. Not um, the rock, not Dwayne Johnson, Black Adam. No, 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 no. That would have been <laughs> completely. He calls on the rock to come and save him. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you smell what the rock is cooking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in <laughs> in the, the bog of eternal stench and he. Oh. He crossed the rocks and they're scratching yeah. on his feet. It's just yeah. oh, he's very he's a sweet comic character. Yeah, it's um all of those little elements are, are really lovely, very thoughtful. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, I kind of was like, we'll, we'll, we'll chat for a bit before we talk about the film and we'll leave like 25 minutes to chat about the film. Yeah. We've, we've kept going and going and going. I know it's <laughs> like, it's sometimes when you get so passionate about films, you just, there's more and more things to talk about. Um, but I, yeah. I don't want to keep you too much longer. However, um, is there any more films like this? Like, so I know, I don't think there's any sequels, right? From Labyrinth. Well, there was talk, wasn't the talk that oh. they're doing either a prequel or a sequel that is all just about Jareth, though? Because obviously oh, really? it's not going to be David Bowie. But I remember reading ages ago, something was in development, whether it was like it was a prequel centered around the Goblin King. I swear it may have been completely pulled, but there was I know there was talks of it at one time or another. Ooh. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's now a Disney Plus series. Yeah, it pops up out of nowhere. Something yeah. else, something else ah. that's going to crop up on a streaming service. But I do remember hearing there was something in development to do with Jareth. Okay, that's um, exciting. Oh, I well, haven't heard of that. I'm not though. sure. No, this would be this would be very interesting. Mm. And this doesn't have any relation to the one series, one season show, Labyrinth, that starred John Hurt, Sebastian no. Stan, and Jessica Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. No, no, no. That would be um, another interesting, interesting spin-off. <laughs> it would have been. Probably. That would have been with Sebastian Stan as like, a soldier. Yeah. <laughs> like Dark Crystal be something quite similar to this. That's another Jane yeah. Anderson production. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Yes, Dark Crystal. That, that's that's a dark film. Yeah. I'm um, just trying to think, is there anything else like this? Like, it's it's such a one of a kind sort of like standalone yeah. story that it's like, if you want something like magical, like a total fantasy adventure, obviously you can go to Star Wars and stuff, but like, it's it's totally different, you know, like the kind of vibe of this yeah. film, you know. So yeah, um, yeah, very much. That's another reason, perhaps, why it's so loved now because they're just it's just mm. so unique. Um, and I think it would be yeah. really tricky to remake it. I think it's one of those standalone yeah, films, definitely. Or to create yeah. a sequel of some kind, how would you even? Well, they would, would totally start? overthink it now. You know, mm. it would be, it would, everything would be so layered. There'd be so much CGI as we were talking about earlier on. It's something yeah. about being caught in the time. You know, like it's yes. so 1986, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah that's it why needs it's so to be beautiful. left alone. Mm-hmm. Yes. It just needs to be left alone. Just leave it. It's perfect as it is. Yes. Leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, like, everybody. You've heard yeah. it from Greg Jones. Leave <laughs> there it. There we go. <laughs> leave it. <laughs> All right. Well, Leanne, Greg, thank oh, you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. Greg, obviously returning to the show, but Leanne, grateful that you, you finally jumped on. I'm so oh. happy that you were here. Thank you for inviting me. It's been absolutely delightful. Honestly, time has flown by. I know. I could I could speak to you all afternoon, but um, thank you so much. No, thank you. Thank you for your time. No, Please thank go. Thank you very much, Chris. You're both very welcome. Uh, next time, if you want to pick another film, you can come back, chat about another film that is just you're just as passionate about and you have such a soft spot for, like Labyrinth. Thanks very much for watching and listening, everybody, to the Good Bit Podcast. We'll catch you all down the road.